This video is all about my new Ender 3S1 breakout board. I'll be covering the new features, print testing, and a pre-sale announcement, so let's get right into the video. I'll also be introducing you to my new director of quality control, Mr. Clicky. We'll get to see him work later, but for now, all you need to know is that he's an essential part of my quality control team, and that he hates shorts. That's enough for now, Mr. Clicky. The foundation of this new design is the printed circuit board itself, which was provided by today's sponsor, PCBWay. With PCBWay's easy online ordering portal, I was able to update my design, place a new order, and have my new boards in hand in under a week. When you can actually hold a prototype board in your own hands, you get a much different perspective than you get if you're just looking at it on a computer screen. That's really helped me fine tune this design and make sure that this product is as good as it can be at launch. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Ender 3S1 breakout board, I want to give you a little background. I got my start working on 3D printers by upgrading my Ender 3 Pro and Ender 3 V2 to try out different fans, extruders, and hot ends. These new Ender 3 S1s aren't living up to the easy to mod reputation of its predecessors. The stock Ender 3 S1 uses tiny Pico blade connectors for virtually all of the connections. These small and fragile connectors may save a little bit of space, but they've made the machine much harder to service and upgrade. For example, if you wanted to upgrade the old part cooling fan to something new that'll provide a bit more cooling power, you have to solder these tiny connectors onto your fan before you can plug it into the board. In this case, I've made a little adapter that lets you go from the tiny little connector up to the normal size connector, but why not just put this standard size connector on the board to begin with? That'd make things a lot easier, and you wouldn't have to come up with janky solutions like this. Also, while you're working on these fan connectors, if at any point you short them together, It'll completely fry your breakout board, and you'll lose the ability to use that fan. I think that's just a bad design choice on Creality's part, because these small connectors are harder to work with and easier to accidentally make shorts with. So it really makes things more tedious and complicated than they need to be. The primary focus of my new modder board is to make the machine easier to mod and upgrade. The 2-pin JST-XH connector is the de facto standard for 2-pin fans. If you buy a fan for your 3D printer off of Amazon, Odds are, it comes with a 2-pin JST-XH connector pre-installed. The modder board is built around these standardized connectors, so when you buy a new part, you can just plug it into your 3D printer and get working with it. Creality also bucked tradition when it came to the stepper motor, heater cartridge, and thermistor connectors. Again, replacing them with these tiny Pico blade connectors that are just fragile and harder to find replacement parts for. It's almost like they're trying to make these machines harder to maintain and upgrade. After all, if you're not able to buy aftermarket parts and install them on your printer, you're going to have to go through Creality if you want to get any upgrades. The modder board fixes these compatibility issues by providing more standardized connectors for the heater cartridge, stepper motor, and thermistor, so you can upgrade your 3D printer the way you see fit, instead of being locked into Creality's shitty ecosystem. Whether you want to increase part cooling, reduce fan noise, or increase your print speeds, the modder board unlocks a bunch of options for upgradability. The other cool thing about this modder board that I want to mention is that it has a standard hole pattern for a stepper motor. So you can see here I have it attached to a completely different type of extruder. I'll be experimenting with different types of extruders later, but right now I really just want to nail down the backwards compatibility and see how it works on the stock Sprite extruder. Mods and upgrades aren't for everyone. Some people just need an additional breakout board because they broke their old one, or they bought a new Sprite hot end and want to be able to hot swap between them. For some reason, when you buy a new Sprite hot end, Creality doesn't include the breakout board with it. So if you get one of these breakout boards, you can set up your second hot end and just swap it on there without having to unscrew the breakout board and plug all these new things in. You can just pull it off and put the new one on. I made this thing backwards compatible, so you can basically just plug everything into this new breakout board and make it a drop-in replacement for the old one. There is one cheeky exception that I made to this backwards compatibility though, and that's for this old part cooling fan. I think it makes way too much noise and provides way too little cooling to be worth using, so I'll leave links to some upgrade options that you have. If you just print this out, you can put a much better part cooling fan on your Ender 3. I'd recommend a 5015 blower fan. That seems to be the standard for most 3D printers, and it does a much better job cooling off your parts than this tiny 4010 fan. Doing a part cooling fan upgrade will greatly increase your ability to print overhangs and bridging, and on top of that, these bigger fans tend to run a little bit quieter than the stock fan. And I'm not even sure why Creality is selling machines with these tiny fans on them. I mean, you're paying almost $400 for one of these, and they can't spend an extra dollar to increase the fan cooling capability. All of these new features and upgrades that I put on the latest revision of the breakout board were sent to me in comments on YouTube, Patreon, and on my Discord channel. 
So please keep providing me feedback on this project. It's really useful for me to help guide my design process to make sure I'm making a product that people will actually want to use. If you have any other feature requests that you'd like to see on a future version of this breakout board, make sure to drop me a line in either the comments section or over on Discord or on my Patreon, and I'll see if I can add it to the next version of the board. Putting this board together was pretty much the same process as in my last video. The only difference is that I'm now using more SMT connectors. So those are the little surface mount components that are a little bit more challenging to solder, but I'm getting pretty good at it at this point. If you've ever taken apart your sprite hot end, you'll know that the PCB goes in right here in the back. This one goes in in just the same spot. So you plug in your thermistor right here, then you plug your heater cartridge in right over here. Now I'll plug in the little stepper motor here, plug in our CR touch, and then the last thing I'll need to plug in is the fan. So just like that, we've put this all together. Right here it says, key here or your printer will die. So what I'm talking about is this little key on the connector. Just like this, you want that little square notch to be right in the middle on the bottom. Otherwise, the connections will be all wrong and it might short things out and break your printer. This is all assembled now, so let's try it out. I've got it all installed. This is the view from behind. There's a little hole up at the top that I'm using as a strain relief. Eventually, I'm going to design a little 3D printed component that'll connect these three screws and that hole up there, and that'll just kind of hold on to everything nice and tight. That way you're guaranteeing that this connector stays in place and you can kind of protect all the other connectors up here too. So that'll be a nice little touch. But for now I'm just using this little cable tie thing. This is the old strain relief. I just kind of attached it here so I don't lose it. But it's not doing anything right here. As you can see this can move back and forth just fine. There's no issues with the wire getting caught or tangled anywhere. I actually think this is better cable routing than what comes stock on the printer because it's not running into anything. It's this nice continuous bend along the entire length of the wire, which will help increase the longevity of this cable here. So now we're ready for testing. Let's turn this thing on and do some test prints. I always kind of dread this part of the build because at the flip of a switch, you might just fry everything and literally hours or days of work can go up in smoke. But let's see what happens this time. It's looking good. All right, let's see our vitals here. We got a temperature reading for our hot end and our heated bed, so that's all looking good. We got our fan that's spun up. That's great. Um, I actually don't have a part cooling fan installed on here right now, so I'm gonna need to slap one of those on. I've got dual connectors up here for the part cooling fans. So a lot of people like running two part cooling fans. Well, this will allow you to plug two fans in and run them off of the same signal. So as you can see, I've made a couple test prints here. They ended up looking pretty good. The focus of this video really isn't on getting the best print quality out of the machine because I'm just making the electrical connections and getting everything working on the board. So since I've completed my print testing and verified that everything on the board is working as intended, I'm pretty much ready to move into production. I know there's a lot of you out there that are interested in trying out one of these boards, so I'm excited to announce the launch of my pre-sale for these boards. I've got everything that I need to go into production. I've got thousands of connectors in here, so I can just start cranking these boards out as the orders come in. And I've got my little lab assistant here, Mr. Clicky, who's going to make sure that all of these boards pass quality control. I'm targeting an October 1st ship date, so any of the orders placed over at my website should be fulfilled in early October. To keep things simple and make sure that I hit my launch date, I'm going to focus on US shipments only for the first batch of orders. Ideally, I'd like to start shipping international orders in late October. The first batch will be a special edition. They'll be gold-plated and hand-built by me, and tested by Mr. Clicky over here. So head over to NathanBuildsRobots.com to learn more. I'll leave a link in the description below. I want to build these first units myself because I think it's important for engineers to get hands-on with the products that they're making. If you just design it and let someone else manufacture and use it, you're never going to get a great idea of how the product is used and how you can make improvements in the future. So I'm definitely practicing what I preach when it comes to best practices in engineering design.